let Jordan take over because special guest that uh, I think Jordan's known forever, and I mean forever. Yeah, I think I've known this guy uh, forever for sure, and that is uh, Trey Reeves with us. And Trey, uh, first off, I don't know. I was trying to think about this. Have you actually? Um, I know you've done interviews. But have you done a radio interview yet? I don't think I have, actually. I think this is my first one, first time for everything. Oh, man, I like it. I'm glad that uh, we can get this done then. But how's the uh, how's the uh, quarantine life? I know you guys aren't officially under quarantine. Nobody's got COVID-19 down there. But uh, how's uh, staying at home right now there at the Reeves household? You know, it's not too bad. Um, I started graduate school this semester, so doing a lot of schoolwork. Um, went fishing a time or two, so it's not it's not terrible down here. Yeah, it, you talk about the online, and uh, that's that's kind of, uh, you're probably more like me. You probably like going to class and being in there, and it, it kind of shocks your world, and all of a sudden you have to do everything online, huh? Yeah, it does. You know, at first it uh, seems kind of easy to do it all online, but you miss the uh, human interaction a little bit. That's something I thrive off of a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of one of the first things I want to get into, Trey, I think you kind of have a unique perspective because you're, uh, Coach Sutton means so much to your dad, and, and, and you've heard all the stories and everything, you know, about uh, what Coach Sutton has, has done for the for the family. I mean, in a lot of ways, uh, what he was able to do with your dad. You and I, when we talked and set this up, did not know um, that Coach Sutton was going to get into the Naismith Hall of Fame, but we did get the news Friday, and it became official on Saturday. So um, I'm sure you guys at home talked about it a little bit, but uh, any thoughts on – um, Coach Sutton making to the Hall of Fame. No, I I just know that as far as our whole family, my dad, my mom, just all of us, um, the whole family stoked for it. Dad, Dad's known he should have been in the Hall of Fame forever, and we we've known that through him. And so it's it's nice to see him finally get recognized um, and get the recognition he deserves on that. Well, yeah, it's uh, we all we all kind of knew that. You and I have discussed that on many occasions. We spent many times there at the house talking a little bit about that a- as well. Now, he- here's something, Trey. I'll, I'll put a little bit, but you know, naturally, you kn- you've known Coach Sutton since you were um, a little kid in a lot of ways. But do you have any personal Coach Sutton stories? Because, like I said, it's a little bit more of a unique perspective with you. You didn't play for him, but your dad did. You know, I don't have any specific stories, but the thing I always remember about him is, uh, you know, every time going to talk to him, no matter what condition he's been in, um, he's always uh, the biggest thing he's always told me, he brags on my dad, tells me how soft his hands were. That's, he tells me that he told me that every time I talk to him. Yeah, yeah, we all we all do that, and your dad did have those good hands, as we all know. Well, Trey, uh, next thing. You know, it's interesting, even though your your playing career is done, we'll get into the future of what's going on with you in a little bit. Um, you're still so close to that team. You and your teammates, especially those other seniors, have been through so much together. So, you know, you, you lose the last part of your season. You guys were at least going to be with the NIT in postseason. And then all of a sudden, it's not. It, it's even to the fact that you guys are close. You're a band of brothers. You can't even really see each other anymore. So... What are you guys doing as far as basketball, as far as trying to keep the camaraderie together right now? You know, we, we stay in constant communication with the coaches and with the teammates through tags, calls, all of that. I actually um, I actually just got off just right before, literally right before I got on here on a um, Zoom video chat with the team. So had a little conversation and talk with the coaches and teammates and try to do that at least once a week in addition to our um, – our normal texts and phone calls that we have. Yeah, and those Zoom calls, Trey, are they – I mean, I, I would take it you guys – you know, Coach Boynton's wanting to check in, make sure the guys are doing what they need to do class-wise and all that. But I, I would take it it's more about just being able to see each other's faces and, and maybe joke around, talk a little bit because, um, you know, you, you try to – you want to keep it as normal as possible in this crazy world, and you guys are so close. I, I would imagine that those calls – it's good to see everybody's face, and even though there's probably business you get to, they're also pretty fun. Oh, that's exactly right. You know, we, we do – there is a little segment of it where we talk about whatever needs to be talked about, um, the coaches and the staff and everybody. But uh, the majority of the phone calls is actually just checking up on each other, seeing how everybody's doing, um, seeing how families are doing, seeing what's going on in each other's lives. And like you said, just seeing each other's face. Um, it's nice considering that – 
we're not even on campus right now, so you don't even see them walking to class, much less in the gym playing or whatever the case may be. Yeah, well, here, here's here's another question for you. Have you and your brother got out to the Reeves gym at all and played a little bit? We went out a few times. We went out a few times, tried to make a little bit of time to go out. Not too much yet, but that'll happen more and more as we go along. I, you still take Trevor pretty good, though, I take it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Robert. Hey, Trey. Yeah, Robert Allen, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Now, now, you said you were able to get out and do a little fishing? Yes. Uh, we haven't been out a ton yet. The weather's not been outstanding most of the day. It's been cold and rainy, but we went once or twice. I, I think I think we're going to have a pretty good week for that. And I know this. I mean, I talked to my son's up in Miami. He's, he coaches football at NEO, and I know this, the Spoonbills are running down the Neo show, so they're, uh, they're, there's fishermen, and they shouldn't be, but they're they're shoulder to shoulder on the banks there trying to drag the bottom and get uh, get those Spoonbills for those eggs. But uh, when, you, when you go, just to give, just to make people out there jealous, because I've heard this from Jordan so many times that the, uh, they're in Gans and the Reeves property, there's, there's some pretty good uh, fishing locales. So when you go out, what do you uh where do you generally go and what do you generally catch? Yeah, we usually go we have a um body of water out on our land and we usually go out there and um we usually catch quite a few. We'll spend three of us will spend a few hours out there and come back with I don't know, seventy five bass and stuff. Not not huge, but last time we went, I'm not gonna lie, we didn't have a whole lot of luck. Can't make anybody too jealous right now, so well, uh, again, it's it's always nice this time of year to be able to go drop a line and have a little fun there. I, I wanted to ask you this, too. Uh, very, very quickly after all this happened, the, uh, the spring sport athletes, in fact, it happened last week, the NCAA Division I Council uh, passed uh, a measure that gives the spring sport athletes that missed most of their season uh, you know, another year of eligibility. Not just the seniors, anybody and everybody down the line, including freshmen, gets another year of eligibility on the end. They decided not to extend that for the winter athletes. Uh, I'm not asking you to speak for any of your senior teammates, but you and Tom, Thomas and Cam and Lindy uh, specifically, and I mean, obviously, you know, uh, you had another senior jump in, but you guys had been there from the beginning. Uh, and have been linked together, but just in your mind, uh, should the winter, I mean, should the winter athletes have been, you know, maybe considered a little bit more for another year of eligibility? And do you feel robbed, or, or how do you feel about that abrupt ending to your your college playing career? You know, it's a little hard to take because um, we thought we had more in the tank, and no matter, we don't exactly know what direction that would go, but um, we do think we have more, and so. That it, it does kind of it does kind of um, deprive us deprive us of that, but it's not really any it's not anything anybody could have controlled, and um, I can't speak for anybody else. And obvious, but obviously we would like the um, opportunity to have that chance. I don't know, like I said, I can't speak for anybody else. Don't know who would have taken advantage of an extra year, who would have not. But um, would have been nice to have that opportunity, but. Uh, the main thing for me, I, I'm glad that those spring sports got it because, yeah, we missed a few games and it does, it would be nice to play those last few games. But um, those spring sports didn't get their whole season. So, to me, the whole winter thing, that's above my pay grade. Both of them are above my pay grade. There's no – I don't – I mean, neither one of those I have any say in. And But uh, I'm just glad those spring sports did get their extra – year because they like i said these kids work uh their whole life with this just like we do but we still play 90 percent of our season 95 percent of our season they didn't get anything so i'm i'm thankful that they gave them the opportunity first and foremost you know trey you say above your pay grade and that guy can lead right into the future because i mean you you became your four years here a kind of i i call it a athletic department rock star I mean, I could not go around anywhere and not hear somebody talk about how much they enjoyed being around you. And I, I felt great to just be able to be around you as long as I 
long as I have. So, I mean, there hadn't been a whole lot of people from Gans uh, around the athletic department in the past. And I, I think we've done pretty good um, as far as uh, – you, my brother, and uh, your dad, and uh, all that. So I, I think we're doing pretty good there. But now you're looking ahead to your future, and I know you're uh, you're not just busy studying for classes. You also got some other things. But what uh, what's the future hold for Trey Reeves? Yeah, right now I'm actually along with graduate school. I'm studying for the LSAT. I plan on applying to law school this coming fall, and uh, hopefully next fall to the fall of 21 uh entering the, into law school don't exactly know where that would be yet but um i plan to have completed my master's degree in accounting at that time and have sit for the cpa and the fall of 21 entering into law school somewhere so hopefully be able to pair <laughs> my um accounting and cpa with a law degree and figure out a career from that and what kind of yeah? And, and well, hey, Jordan, let me jump in here because I, I, I chuckled a little bit, not because he's going to law school, but because um, you have an interesting dilemma in this state. Uh, if you're going to go to law school in the state of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State unfortunately does not have a law school. There is one in Norman at the University of Oklahoma, <laughs> but I've known more than a few OSU graduates that say I couldn't go there. In fact, I've got a daughter, Trey, that. She went to work in the oil business when she graduated with the plan of going to law school. And uh, she worked in the oil business, I want to say four or five years for Williams Company. And then uh, she's finishing up. This semester will finish up her first year law at University of Houston, which is where she was working for Williams. But, yeah, she told me, she said, Daddy, I, yeah, she applied to, I think, Houston, Texas, Tulane, Baylor, uh, and you know, obviously Houston was the closest, so she chose that. But she said a long time ago, she said, Daddy, I want to go to law school, but I won't be going to law school at the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> that was just, she couldn't take it. But, you know, a lot of people do. It's a good law school. I don't want to discourage you. No, I, I knew a comment like that was going to come. As soon as, we, <laughs> as, soon as, soon as soon as I knew law school was coming up, I knew that was coming. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to apply this fall probably apply to several places don't don't exactly know what's going to take or where that's going to take me so it's a little too early to speak on any of that we'll see anything will be an adjustment that or going out of state either way so we'll figure out what kind of adjustment i have to make hey on down the road hey knowing your proficiency in the classroom and and i'm gonna guess you're a good test taker so the lsat uh, who knows, Jordan? He may be admitted. He may get admit uh, admitted to the Ivies. <laughs> he may go to Ivy League law school. We never know. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But but Trey, we do have a, a little bit of history in in the family as far as uh, somebody going to OU. Um, we, we do have a, a, a doctor. <laughs> you guys have a doctor in the family who spent a little time at OU before then going to Oklahoma State Medical School. We do. My uh, my uncle, my dad's brother. He now. Um, works as a doctor in Fort Smith, Arkansas, but he uh, he went to OU for his undergrad and uh, wore the rival colors until uh, he switched over to Oklahoma State Medical School. Finally got a little sense, I think. <laughs> well, hey, I, let's put it this way. He went to school there, Trey, but he didn't wear any of those rival colors. I can I can tell you that. So No, no that is true. That is, that's a Good point. Good point you bring up. Yeah. Well, uh, as far as you you know accounting, but as far as in particular, is there any sort of law? I mean, do you see yourself being a sports agent? Do you see yourself just getting into business mergers? Like, is there any kind of law that kind of spurts your interest right now that you're kind of looking more in detail at getting into? Because that has a lot to do with the school you choose as well. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of paths I'm looking at, like opportunities I'm looking at. There's, like you mentioned, sports, uh, sports agency, sports law. There's um, tax law. There's mergers and acquisitions. There's all kinds of things that I definitely am taking a deeper dive into, trying to figure out kind of where my um, where my strengths guide me and where my interests may uh, guide me. But as of right now, I don't exactly know where that may take me, and who knows down the down the line, other opportunities may arise, and I'm open to those as well right now. I don't have a definite set direction aside from, like I said, kind of my my goal right now is to um, pass the CPA exam next 
spring and or this coming spring a year from now and um and then enter law school and hopefully get a law degree from a good from a good school and aside from that we'll see where this whole thing leads yeah my brother's a pretty good resource for you too on that and i think you know that as far as uh you know going in and you don't know you may find you like something else uh once you get in there so uh and i know you and him have been talking a little bit because he's down in houston right now um, working for a uh, law firm down there doing kind of the mergers acquisition side of things but uh uh, we know you're going to be doing good on that no matter what. But, Trey, last thing for you, and, and I kind of wanted to save this for last because you have been on one heck of a ride. I mean, it. it, it I, I'm going to go through this and just kind of get your reaction. But you guys and you seniors, and you're part of that group, you had the loss of a teammate. You had uh, different coaches come in throughout. You were on the, the cusp of a couple of things – um, you know, with seasons that could have been lost and you guys battled right back to, to do the best you can. There was investigations going on while you guys were there. I mean, you guys have been just embattled as far as things are concerned. Do you ever, you know, talk with those guys and just say, man, do you know what we've been through and now realize that, you know, this, even though it didn't end with a national title, it didn't end – with you guys, it ended abruptly like it did with this just being the last thing thrown at you. Do you ever talk and say, man, I really think that uh, we we have been through a lot and we're going to be so much better prepared for it into the future? No, we've, we've talked about that a lot um, between, especially like you said, myself and Thomas and Lindy and Cam, just because we are the ones that have been there from the, from the start of this all uh and we've been through that ride together. I think we've grown closer because of that. And I think that, um, like you said, we're better prepared for things life may throw at us, things we may – road bumps we may hit, whatever the case may be. But um, we, we've talked about it several times, and it, it's crazy to look at, you know, from the start all the way to the very, very end, the last thing that happened. It was – there was road bumps. There was, uh, there was things thrown at us that – a lot of teams would never get thrown at us and uh, at them. And we got a lot of that, just at us four all the way through. And we talked about it, and there's been a comment made several times. And honestly, on the way back from the Big 12 tournament, once we figured out season was over, we ta- uh, Thomas and I were talking about it on the bus. And we kind of sat back and laughed about it. And um, one of those things that uh, he made the comment, we should write a book over this. And um, – one of those things that COVID thing, the coronavirus ending our season was almost just like a cherry on top. There was no, no more fitting way for this all to end as much as we've had to go through. But like I said, made us grow closer, made us uh, grow as people individually as well and be more prepared for things to come, I think. Well, Trey, I appreciate you, man. And, and I'll see if Robert has anything for you. But hopefully uh, we can get some good news. And, and I don't know if we're going to be able to uh, – we may have to practice some social distancing for a Memorial Day uh, fishing tournament. So uh, I, I, I don't know if, if the ruling has been made, if that's uh, going to be canceled or what rules are going to be in place. But I'll I tell you, Trey, if I can't get and do that fishing tournament and uh, try to try to beat you on this thing, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know if it's going to it's going to set my summer off in a bad way, man. I, I got to be a part of that fishing tournament, even though you've got the better of me the last few times. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you may get get to escape that it may may set you off on the right foot it's not the wrong one <laughs> hey hey here's the thing though you get to go up there and fish that lake a little bit more than me so that 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 changes things a little bit so you guys are a little bit better prepared that, that is true that's true it's always open for you though always open for you i know and i'm probably going to try to get in and do that because <laughs> fishing's one thing that you can do that you can still social distance a little bit so I may have to try to get in there and uh, see if I can't uh, get with Dad and, and, and go, you know, sneak attack and see if we can't figure out how to beat you guys this time. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, I don't have anything else except wish uh, Trey the best. And uh, I tell you that uh, if you can if you can somehow get not only the CPA, but get a, an MBA. I know SMU's law school combines an MBA and law degree simultaneously. But if you could be that CPA, MBA, law degree, man, you talk about a triple threat. That's 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 pretty cool. But uh, best of wishes with uh, the uh, the CPA exam and 
and uh, best of wishes with uh, everything you're doing. And, and again, I'll repeat what Jordan said. A fantastic representative of Oklahoma State. And I know, uh, you know, every time Coach Boynton opened his mouth about the influence you had as a member of that basketball team, uh, it was it was with the utmost respect and admiration. So, uh, again, congratulations on uh, on what you did at Oklahoma State, and we'll look forward to hearing what Trey Reeves does in the future. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Just trying to trying to do my job, make the best best of the situations that arise.